Hello everyone, my name is David. Today we are going to take a look at another real tale with you. Friends, today's story is about a bank robbery in which the thief's identity has never been revealed to anyone. There is no solid evidence available to anyone about it. The thief committed the robbery in such a way that people were amazed. In 1945, when World War II was going on between Japan and America, America dropped many bombs on Japan. As a result, there was a lot of chaos in Japan, and many people were dying due to this war. And America win the war and take over Japan. The impact of this war on Japan was so severe that people were suffering due to hunger and lack of money. And as time passed, three years went by, and then comes the year 1948. On January 26, 1948, people were working in the Imperial Bank of Japan in the morning. People were coming from outside to deposit their money in the bank and some were withdrawing. All the bank employees were busy with their work, and there were many people in the bank. A total of 21 employees were working in the bank, but that day, seven employees was on leave due to illness, including the bank manager, who was also on leave due to illness. On the same day, in the afternoon, a man enters the bank. He was wearing a long coat, a hat, and had a band on one hand, indicating that he is a government official. When he enters the bank, he is asked by a bank employee that why he has come here. The man told him that he is a doctor and he came from the health ministry, and then says that he needs to meet the bank manager as he has some work with him. However, since the bank manager was on leave that day, the employee tells him that the manager is not at work today, and he cannot meet him. The employee then tells him that he can meet the deputy manager. The man agrees and the employee sends the man to the deputy manager. When he goes to the deputy manager, the deputy manager asks him what his work is. The man replies that he has come from the Health Ministry of America and has learned that people in this area are suffering from a disease called silicosis, caused by flying dust from the wells. He also tells him that the American Health Ministry is making a lot of effort to completely prevent this disease and has made a medicine for it, which everyone needs to take to avoid the disease. It is an order from the American Health Ministry that everyone there should be given this medicine. At first, the deputy manager is a little skeptical, but the man confuses the deputy manager with his words, and the deputy manager gives him permission to give the medicine to everyone. There were 14 people working in the bank, along with two other people, a woman and a little girl, who were the family of an employee working in the bank. Then the manager gathers everyone in one place, and when all the employees are gathered there, the doctor takes out the medicine and gives it to everyone. He tells them that they have to take this medicine at once, because if you take this medicine in small doses, it will harm your teeth. Then he tells the people how to take the medicine and drinks a little medicine in a cup himself to show them how to take it. So everyone watches him and understands. Afterwards, everyone starts taking the medicine one by one, and after a while, the bank employees who were present in the bank start complaining to the doctor that they are experiencing a lot of burning in their throats. But the doctor tells them not to worry, as it will only last for a short time and everything will be fine later. However, the burning sensation in people's throats increases so much that everyone starts running around to find water to drink and reduce the burning. Meanwhile, the doctor was waiting for this moment. He collects all his belongings and when he sees that people are not paying attention to him and are busy with their own work, he takes advantage of the opportunity. He goes behind the cashier's desk and steals 160,000 cash and a 17,000 price check. He then runs away. When he runs away, what happens in the bank shocks everyone. Within 10 to 15 minutes, 10 people collapse on the ground and die because the medicine that the man had given them was not medicine at all. It was a deadly poison. The people who survive are extremely scared after seeing the people around them die. They leave the bank and ask for help from the people outside. Those people inform the police about them, so the police immediately rush there. The people who survive are quickly taken to the hospital. Only six people survive in the bank, but on the way to the hospital, two more people among them die, and now only four people are left alive. After this, the police begin their investigation. They interrogate those four people about the man, what he looked like, and what he was wearing. They tell the police that they don't know anything about him, except that he was between 40 and 50 years old. 
Then the police start their investigation. They go to the bank and starts the investigation there, but police doesn't find any evidence. However, the police force is puzzled because there was a lot of money in the bank, but the thief didn't touch that money. They wonder why he only took such a small amount. The police are also surprised because the thief also drank from the same bottle, but nothing happened to him. How did he manage to steal and escape after drinking the medicine? Later, the police find out that the check he had deposited was cashed at the Yasuda Bank, which was only three kilometers away from the bank. The police continue their investigation and go to the bank, where they inquire about the man who deposited the check. However, they also don't know anything because the name and address he had given were fake. The police also find out in their investigation that such incidents have happened before. The previous incident occurred in October 1947, which was three months before this incident. In that incident too, the thief had given medicine to people in the bank. However, later it was found that no one died there. Everyone survived. The thief had only conducted an experiment there to see how quickly people would trust him. And then he actually executed this plan on January 20th, 1948. He chose a bank in the capital of Japan, Tokyo. He went to the bank, talked to the manager, and introduced himself as a doctor from the health ministry. He told the manager about a Mr. Danny's family suffering from some disease and that he had received news that a Mr. Danny had visited the bank that day. So, sterilization should be done in the bank and the people working in the bank should be given this medicine so that they do not get this disease. The bank manager checks the bank's register to verify this and finds that there is indeed a name registered as Mr. Danny. However, one thing he doesn't understand is that the address in the bank's register and the address the doctor gave are different. To confirm this, the manager goes to the doctor and tells him everything. He thought that his lie will be caught here, and he leaves the bank manager, saying that there must have been some confusion in the address, and he will check in his office and come back. Then he will give this medicine to these people. But after that, the man never returned to the bank. When the thief used to visit any bank, he would show his visiting card so that people would believe that he is a real doctor and no one could doubt him. However, for each bank, he used different visiting cards, which had different names written on them. And for his second theft, he had written the name Jeremy Gukshi, which turned out to be Fak when the police investigated. When he had committed the first theft, he had used a real name there, Dr. Matsui. This name was a real name, and that person was also a doctor, so the police caught doctor and started the investigation. When the police questioned the doctor, he told them that he was in a meeting that day, and the doctor told them that I have a witness to prove it. But the question for the police now was, how did Dr. Matsui's visiting card reach the bank? To which the doctor told the police that his visiting card was a limited edition, which was a special kind of visiting card. And in this way, he had only printed 100 visiting cards, and he used it only in a special meeting. And when someone gave him his visiting card, he would give his visiting card to the person. The doctor also told the police that when he gave any visiting card, he would write a when and where he gave that visiting card to people, and he had given his visiting card to 92 people like this, and now he had only eight visiting cards left. Because of Dr. Matsui's habit, the police started the investigation of those 92 people, in which there were 20 women, and there was no connection of the remaining 62 people left with this incident. They did not find any evidence, nor did they doubt anyone. Now there were also 10 people who had left, but the police did not have any information about them. And during this time, the post-mortem report of the people who died in the bank comes to the police, and it is found that their death was due to poison. Now the question for the police was that if everyone had drunk poison from the same bottle, then how did doctor and four people who had drunk poison survive? The post-mortem doctor presented his theory to the police that perhaps the thief had already put oil in the bottle because oil does not mix with water, it stays on top. He explained that when the doctor drank poison from the bottle, he did not drink poison, he drank oil which was on top, and there was no poison mixed in it. And when the rest of the people were also given the same thing, they also drank oil, and when the poison left below, those who drank them all died. The police were looking for those 10 people who had exchanged visiting cards with Matsui, but they couldn't find any information about them. After a six-month investigation, the police finally reached those 10 people, and one of them was a key figure. The police were suspicious of a man aged between 45 to 50, 
named Sadamichi Hirasawa because he had been to jail four times before for attempting to cash fake checks at a bank. It was later discovered that he had deposited 130,000 cash in the bank after the bank robbery incident. When questioned by the police, he denied any involvement. However, the police became convinced that he was the culprit and sent him to Tokyo jail for investigation. They also called four people who were working at the bank and had consumed poison. When they arrived at the police station, when they saw that man, they denied that the man was the fake doctor who had robbed the bank was not this person. The police were surprised by this. However, they were not convinced, so they started using third-degree methods to extract the truth from him. They kept him hungry, deprived him of sleep, and didn't let him rest, which led him to confess to his crime after a few days. However, his condition deteriorated so much that he had to be admitted to the hospital. When he recovered, the police brought him to court, where he claimed that he had confessed under pressure because the police had used third-degree methods on him and had forced him to confess. He also stated that the signature on the confession was not his, but a fake one. The police had already sent that poison to the hospitals in Tokyo and Kyoto for research, and when the research results were presented, everyone was shocked because it revealed that this poison is connected to Japan's military history. There used to be a special chemical unit in Japan's army known as the Water Purification Unit, also referred to as Unit 731. This unit had a terrifying history as it conducted chemical research on human subjects, resulting in their deaths. Now, the question haunting the court and the police was how such a dangerous poison connected to Unit 731 ended up in the possession of Sadamichi Hirasawa. Neither had he worked with Unit 731, nor had any connection with them. The court theorized whether this theft was orchestrated by a soldier or a doctor who had previously worked in the unit. While he tried to deflect blame that put on him by police, when police asked him about cash, he said that the 130,000 cash he had deposited in the bank came from selling adult paintings, as he was a painter by profession and earned good money from selling adult paintings. His relatives testified in court about his poor financial condition, being a skilled painter. He used to paint paintings and earn money. When the police asked him why he hadn't mentioned these things before, he replied that he was afraid of tarnishing his reputation because he sell adult paintings. Consequently, the police declared him guilty and sentenced him to death by hanging. However, he did not receive the death penalty and instead spent 40 years in jail until his death at the age of 92. There was no evidence to prove that he was the one who had robbed the bank. Even after his death, his relatives tried to reopen the case, filing a total of 20 requests by 2015, which were all dismissed by the court. Nevertheless, people created two theories about this incident. First, that it was an experiment by the American government on people, and second, that it was the work of a criminal gang, yet no one knows for sure who committed the theft and why. So, this was today's story. Thank you for joining us on this journey today. We hope you enjoyed the content and found it valuable. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more insightful videos like this one.